Hello and welcome. Innovation in autism mental health care delivery through collaborative care and technology. My name is Abhilash Desai. I'm a psychiatrist in Boise, Idaho. I'm also adjunct associate professor, Department of Psychiatry, University of Washington School of Medicine, Idaho track. Collaborative care involves psychiatrists working closely not only with primary care, but also many physician assistants, nurse practitioners who are managing very complex psychiatric illnesses in individuals with autism. The second component is focus on population health. So all individuals with autism in the state of Idaho will be the focus. The third is outcome tracking where we can track whether collaborative care can reduce, say, visits to the emergency department for behavioral emergencies. The fourth component is relationship building to establish trust, because collaborative care can work only if there is trust between different team members. The final component is robust education component that I'll be talking in a minute. Technology is essential for collaborative psychiatric care to reach all individuals with autism across the state of Idaho. My availability to have electronic health records can increase my uh, ability to help primary care providers. By using Zoom, WebEx, and other audio video platforms, I can easily be available during the office visits or during team meeting. ECHO program is an excellent technology-based education component that I'll talk in a minute. And behavior imaging app, which I have used and found very useful, is a very unique tool where we can safely and securely record the behavior of individuals with autism through, say, a phone, and then transmit it to the team members who can review the behaviors and then decide what's the best course of action. Sometimes the video provides more data and more accurate causes of behaviors, such as medication side effects, headaches, seizures, and this could prevent us from increasing psychiatric medicines unnecessarily. Project ECHO was launched by Dr. Sanjeev Arora in New Mexico. It's spread all over United States. We have two programs at University of Idaho, Opioid Crisis and Behavioral Health. Uh, it's a program where a group of experts uh, provide regular education to all healthcare professionals, especially primary care providers across the state of Idaho. And the primary care providers can even uh, ask for specific opinions on their difficult cases. I would uh, strongly recommend you to check out the two presentations that are available on YouTube and at the website of Project ECHO, uh, Autism Spectrum Disorder and Overview and Pharmacologic Treatment of Insomnia. When I talk about education as a key component, especially in individuals with autism, there are four poisons. One is irrational polypharmacy. And I work closely with the primary care providers for rational deprescribing, where we are reducing psychiatric medicines and even non-psychiatric medicines. Second is unrecognized medical conditions are very common cause of behavioral disturbances in individuals with autism. And although sometimes it's difficult, it is really possible to identify gastrointestinal problems, pain, insomnia, uh, and then treat them rather than give more psychiatric medicines. Unmet psychological, spiritual, and social needs are also a very common cause of behavioral disturbances. Behavioral interventions, strengths-based psychological and social interventions are key to improving wellness of individuals with autism. Professional and family caregiver burnout is common. And again, I would uh, recommend mindfulness and meditation for preventing caregiver burnout. STEPS stands for social support, training, education, praise, and support. So we need to provide 
extensive support to the family members and staff so that the well-being of not only the individual with autism, but also their support system stays well. Another common thing I've seen is poorly managed nutritional problems in individuals with autism and comprehensive nutrition assessment and intervention should be the key for all individuals with autism. Dignity erasing care, unfortunately, is commonly seen in individuals with autism who seek care in the emergency department or hospital settings where the healthcare professionals and physicians there are not well trained in how best to manage and help individuals with autism having behavioral emergencies. And through collaborative care, we can switch that to dignity enhancing care. The examples that I would like to share about collaborative care are as follows. One is say a nurse practitioner sends me an email for me to review a lab test for a person on lithium. The person has an autism spectrum disorder. I review the lab test and then give them a call and I give them my guidance. The whole time would take just 10 minutes. Another example is where the uh, parents want me to be present via video in their visit to their primary care. And again, I'm present only for five, 10 minutes and I can give the primary care physician my guidance about psychiatric medicines, about them uh, prescribing applied behavior analysis based interventions rather than psychiatric medicines. Another example is interdisciplinary team, which includes board certified behavior analyst, the person with autism, their parents, the staff, the social worker, the primary care provider, and myself. And we spend 30 minutes to one hour once a month discussing in detail what is going well and how we can improve uh, mental health further. Also through uh, audio video platform, I can assess the person with autism in their own home. So nothing is better than that. And again, behavior imaging app, I already mentioned, uh, can enhance data gathering and that can improve the accuracy, accuracy of identifying the causes of behavioral problems. One of the key benefits of collaborative psychiatric care via technology is preventing behavioral emergencies such as self-injurious behaviors, aggression, and even preventing visits to the emergency department or involvement of the police. How do you get buy-in? It's important to share success stories by leveraging power it's important to appeal to the conscience that this is the right thing to do because we will need funding and by appealing to the desire of the leadership to control costs so that the government, the insurance companies and the hospitals provide the finances needed to make collaborative psychiatric care via technology a reality for all individuals with autism. Please check out these resources on collaborative care and to conclude, we all have an ethical obligation to do everything we can to improve mental health of all individuals with autism across the state of Idaho. Namaste. Thank you.